Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to my Paizo Family of Role-Playing Games 2022 Holiday Gift Guide video. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at some things for Starfinder and Pathfinder and just products that I think make for great gifts either for people that you're looking to get into role-playing games for the first time or looking to get into things like Starfinder or Pathfinder for the first time. Uh, some products for the people that are already well into those RPGs, as well as some accessories and stuff like that. Now, this is not going to be a comprehensive list of everything that's come out in this past calendar year. Uh, Paizo does a really fantastic job of supporting their ongoing systems with lots of adventures, accessories, and even hardcover books throughout the year. I just want to focus on a handful of things that I think would make for some great gifts. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, sort of talk about them as we go. I'm going to break this down into a few different categories. We've got uh, gifts for beginners, either, again, people that you're looking to get into RPGs either for the first time or are simply trying to get into the Paizo RPGs for the first time. Uh, then there's just going to be some of what I consider to be the uh, the better uh, or my favorite hardcover books to come out for this year. Again, not an, ex uh, an exhaustive list. I may do a year in review video, um, probably early 2023, with some of the stuff that's come out in 2022 that I haven't addressed here. And there's just going to be some accessories and adventures and stuff like that that we're going to take a look at. So first things first, these aren't necessarily going to be new products, but these are still things that I do like to show in these videos, um, just to let you know that they are out there. They are still in print. Paizo does a really good job of keeping these uh, constantly being produced for people. But if you're looking to get somebody into either Pathfinder or Starfinder, um, be it someone who's used to RPGs already or somebody that you want to introduce to role-playing games, uh, there's really no better place to begin than the beginner box. So here we've got the Starfinder beginner box. And here we have the Pathfinder 2nd Edition beginner box. And these things are fantastic. They are some of my favorite starter set products that I own. And I own a lot of starter sets. Uh, I've done unboxing videos of these and my review video of these already in the past. So I will include the Starfinder and Pathfinder playlists at the end of this if you want to search them out. But the beginner boxes are fantastic for a few different reasons. Number one, it's just a really good introductory product for people getting into RPGs for the first time or looking to get into these specific role-playing games uh, for the first time. And they are packed full of value for what you're paying for these. So they come with the obligatory sets of dice that you would expect to have in here. You also have your adventure book and your rule book. Um, but these, instead of just being like staple bound, they actually do have like a proper binding on them for the soft cover books. Uh, in addition to that, they both come with uh, sets of pre-generated characters. So if you want to simply uh, open the box and begin play immediately, that's something that you can do using the iconic characters from both of the respective role-playing games. However, they also include rules for creating your own characters using the classes and the species, ancestries, whatever you want to call them, uh, depending on the role-playing game, uh, that are provided in here. So, for example, if you want to make an elven wizard instead of a human wizard for Pathfinder, or if you want to make, like, a dwarven rogue, then those are things that you can do with um, the ability to create your own characters uh, as opposed to just relying on the pre-generate. So you do have some flexibility there. Uh, you also get a great double-sided uh, poster map. Uh, one side will usually uh, depict uh, an adventure location. Uh, so, for example, in the Starfinder one, there's um, the, like the, uh, the adventure location. You've got that on one side, whereas the other side is just a generic uh, map. With Pathfinder 2nd Edition, both sides of the double-sided map are actually... Uh, related to the specific adventures included in the uh, the box, but it's still again great value. The regular uh, double-sided poster maps. It's the same size, the same quality. 
be the same materials that you can use your dry erase markers on them, your wet erase markers, or even permanent markers on both of these, um, you know, starter set maps. So they didn't skimp on that. And those are usually around the $20 value as it is. You also get sets of pawns. So these cardboard pawn sheets that you can use for some rudimentary miniatures for the tactical combat. And it's just, you get a ton of value in these. And I think, you know, for the price that you're paying, you're getting your money's worth. Again, the Paizo starter sets are some of the beginner boxes, are some of the best uh, starter introductory products I have ever seen. And I cannot endorse these enough. In fact, the map that you see here, that's just sort of the background for this video, is actually taken from the first edition Pathfinder beginner box, which, if I recall correctly, is also still in print. Uh, it's just uh, on a shelf with stuff on top of it, and I didn't want to bother uh, moving a whole bunch of stuff to try to get that down. But yeah, the beginner boxes for Pathfinder 1st Edition, 2nd Edition, and Starfinder make for some excellent gifts for those uh, would-be or new uh, potential uh, people that you want to get into role-playing games or just someone that you're trying to get into the Pathfinder games in general. So we're just going to shunt those off to the sides there. Uh, now another great introductory product which I've also shown in the previous videos but these still very much hold true today uh, again as a cheaper alternative are the pocket edition books for Pathfinder and for Starfinder. So here we've got the core rule books for both of these and these things are awesome. I love these to death. These are the exact copies of the larger hardcover books. They are simply scaled down. So page references are always going to be the same whether you're using a pocket edition or the regular hardcover. Uh, and these are usually about half the price of the hardcover, which, you know, they're scaled down to about half the size. So I think that's a pretty fair trade-off. Uh, what's also great about the pocket editions is at the time that they are printed or the time that they are initially released at the very least, uh, they do actually incorporate all of the errata as of the production time that these were originally put out, uh, which is great for somebody like me because I am horrible at keeping up with errata. I usually just don't. So, um, you know, for minor corrections to spells or um, magic items or rules, things like that, they're going to be in these pocket editions as well, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And again, you've got Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you've got Starfinder. However, um, Pathfinder 1st Edition products are still being printed by Paizo to this day uh, in, in respect to the pocket editions that they release. So you've got things like the core rule books, you've got the bestiaries for Pathfinder 1st and 2nd Edition. Uh, for Starfinder, you actually do have the Alien Archives have been reproduced. I also believe that the Armory book at the time that I'm recording this have also been released. I just don't currently have those in my collection, but I do want to fill out my collection of pocket editions in 2023. That's gonna be one of my collecting goals for the upcoming year. But yeah, these things are fantastic. They're a cheaper alternative to getting the full-size hardcover. And with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, like I said, you've got all three of the bestiaries, you've got the Advanced Player's Guide, you've got the Game Mastery Guide, and then several of the supplement books, the rules expansion books, whatever you want to call them, uh, have also been released in Pocket Edition, including some of the books that we're going to be taking a look at a bit later in this video. And last year, I believe I also showed off some of the ones that had been released at that point as well. So yeah, really awesome stuff. Again, great affordable uh, ways of getting the core rules as well as some of the key rule books for these different role-playing games uh, into people's hands for the holidays. Again, you know, money can definitely be tight. If you want to get somebody into role-playing and you don't want to just get a starter set, you want them to have the full rules, then man, these pocket editions are absolutely fantastic for that. Um, in 2022, we also saw some really great hardcover books being released for Pathfinder and Starfinder. So one that I want to start with here is actually for Starfinder. This is the Interstellar Species book. Now, um, when it comes to Starfinder in 2022, one of the larger focuses that Paizo had sort of put on it was accessories and some getting some of the pocket editions put out to market. So we don't have a ton of new hardcover books in 2022 for Starfinder, but we do get this Interstellar Species book, which has... Um, some a new player character class that you can have in here as well as new playable races 
um, collected from a source of a litany of other books as well. Some really great stuff in here, some art, um, some great artwork included as well. So yeah, just again, Starfinder is an amazing role-playing game. It's actually what got me really hooked on the Paizo product uh, library in the first place. And uh, just the creativity that goes into a lot of the Starfinder species is absolutely fantastic. And yeah, really great book, one that I highly recommend. I will, uh, at the time I'm recording this, I have yet to actually record my flip through and review of this book. But I will just say right off the bat, um, I think that this is a fantastic book and a great addition to your Starfinder role-playing game library. So yeah, really awesome book there. Now for Pathfinder, we do have a few more books uh, to kind of show off here. Uh, we're going to start with some Lost Omens books. Um, so we've got what is one of my favorite Lost Omens books that has come out for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. The Lost Omens series is, instead of it being like rules heavy um, or like player options heavy necessarily, it's more world building stuff. It's your campaign settings as well as like your organizations. Um, you know, they're sort of their uh, specific books. And it just fills out a lot of flavor. And one of the best flavor-related books that they've introduced has to be the, uh, the Pathfinder Lost Omens Travel Guide. This thing is just absolutely awesome. And essentially, it's kind of presented almost as if it is like a travel brochure um, to introduce you to some of the different cultures throughout the world of Galarian, uh, some customs, even things like their calendars, um, languages, the, and also really cool stuff like just describing like different fashion trends for different levels of wealth within various societies. Uh, just really, really cool stuff, how it might change, you know, food products, um, you know, hobbies, pastimes, just so much really, again, it's just so full of flavor. And this is one of those things where you might not use a lot of the material in here in your everyday session, but it's such an entertaining read that when you go through and you like, you see the different manners of dress, the different food, um, dishes, what kind of, uh, like seasonings might be favored in one region versus another, some of their traditions and customs and holidays. It's just such a fun read that you're going to want to incorporate some of this stuff in, even if the players may not, you know, pay strict attention to it. It's just, again, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic book. And I'm a sucker for some really just fun reads and flavor text. And uh, this is one of the best books that Paizo has put out for Pathfinder um, that is just uh, just a fun, entertaining read. And I, I, I love this book. Uh, and again, I don't think I've actually gotten to record my review video on this. I know I, try, I sat down and started working on it, um, but it was just a really rough night. <laughs> so uh, I didn't end up getting the video out, but I will be uh, recording a video for this probably in early 2023. Uh, but yeah, this book is, again, absolutely fantastic, and I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, and again, like I said, with Pathfinder, they've also released a few different, like, really in-depth uh, campaign setting books. And one of the things that um, Paizo has done really well is just, again, the depth of detail in their campaign settings. Uh, we had uh, the Mogwani Expanse uh, that came out last year, as well as a like a 300 page book on the city of Absalon, um, which again, just full of great information, some plot hooks, some adventure ideas, but not so strictly defined that you as the game master can't make it your own. And I find that Paizo struck a really great balance with, um, you know, the amount of flavor that they give you, um, the amount of detail that they give you while still leaving enough stuff open-ended for you to really customize it to your own group's taste. And we've got their newest campaign setting book. Uh, this is The Impossible Lands. Uh, now, again, at the time I'm recording this, I just got the box, um, the, the shipment that had this in it uh, within just a few days. So I will be doing a flip through and a, and a review video on this again sometime in the very near future. But um, this is one of my favorite locations in the world of Galarian for one simple reason, and that is places like Osarian, uh, which is your Egyptian themed kind of uh, area, 
and for, I think it's Geb, I, I'm really bad with names, yeah, Geb, uh, which is a land kind of populated heavily with various undead creatures. I believe Geb is also the setting for the current, at the time I'm recording this, uh, the current Pathfinder Adventure Path, the Bloodlord series. And yeah, this is, again, just an absolutely fantastic book. Um, some beautiful artwork in here. Uh, some really just, again, great information. Uh, you get lots of really cool descriptions of NPCs, locations. I, I mean, you can't look at that and not tell me that like that immediately inspires you uh, to create some sort of scenario or adventure. I just love this artwork. And anyone who says that like the artwork in Paizo products is one of their biggest weaknesses... I don't know what artwork you're looking at, um, but uh, with 2nd Edition Pathfinder and uh, Starfinder in particular, there is some amazing, incredible artwork in here. So Impossible Lands, this is one that I highly recommend. It's a new release, so you know, it would make for an excellent gift in 2022. Now, going along with some more Pathfinder 2nd Edition books, earlier I mentioned that there were some rules expansion supplement books, and I've got a couple of them here, and uh, these are actually two of my favorite that have come out. So, we've had the uh, Secrets of Magic book, which I thought was really good. There was the Guns and Gear book, which um, I didn't get to really do much of a review on for a couple of different reasons. One, uh, the hardcover version that I actually ended up receiving was misprinted so that some of the, uh, the pages were actually duplicated in the book. But there was also a lot of issues involving guns around the time, like real world events. Uh, involving that, um, and I just didn't feel like it was an appropriate time to really dive into that book. Um, but we will see some products related to it here. But those were released last year, those books. This year, we have seen The Dark Archive. Now, again, uh, this is a fantastic book. Uh, you do get a couple of classes in here. There's the, uh, the Thaumaturgist, uh, and there is um, the Archivist uh, classes. And these guys, again, these are absolutely just really, really cool uh, classes, which I will... I think I did a video on one of them already, and I will sort of dive into the other ones. But my favorite part of this whole book has to be the cryptids. So things like, if you think of creatures like, you know, Sasquatch or Chupacabra, Loch Ness Monster, like, those are considered cryptids. They're these kind of, like, almost mythical creatures uh, heavily involved in various cultures' folklore. And uh, this book has some great stuff involving them, including options for your character. If you've been exposed to the attacks of certain types of creatures, like you've got the, uh, the uh, petrified skin uh, ability, where if you've been petrified by an enemy, um, the, the lore behind it is you were never fully properly uh, healed from that. And uh, you actually show, like, some of the remnants of being petrified in, like, stony patches of skin sort of throughout your body. And if you take more and more damage, um, the actual petrification begins to spread. And if you're reduced, if you're knocked unconscious, instead of actually being knocked unconscious and having to make, like, death saving throws uh, or... Um, yeah, I think the the death like the the saves the the saves to end or to you know limit your your dying condition. Uh, instead, you just become petrified, and you would have to actually be brought out of the petrification in order to get back into the combat. But yeah, really really cool stuff. But then, like I said, the cryptids themselves that they have in here, you've got like the primeval one, which is essentially like a gargantuan version of regular uh, animals. Again, you could look at things like um, like Loch Ness Monster might be considered sort of like a primeval uh, type of thing, or Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, whatever you want to refer to them as, could be considered like that kind of thing. And what I love about them is that because they've existed for aeons, uh, and so many would-be heroes, monster slayers, have tried to take them down and failed, they just have remnants of weapons just stuck into their body, so much so that it actually creates a protective barrier, um, because so many people have tried to kill them over the years. 
Uh, but the my favorite cryptid has to be the rumored cryptid. And this is one where um, the more it, it actually thrives on conflicting information and rumor spreading. So the more that people are talking about these creatures, the more exaggerations that they place on them, the more powerful the creature can get, the more different abilities that they can take on or forms that they can assume. It's just, again, a really fantastic book. I absolutely love this one. It's the kind of thing, again, there's a lot of really cool flavor. There's a lot of really cool potential for uh, adventures and scenarios that you can come up with it. And yeah, it's just an amazing book and would make a fantastic gift. Now, along with that, uh, this is going to be an absolute personal bias uh, for sure, but it's my video, so I'm going to do it. Uh, and that is the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Book of the Dead. I've talked about this in several videos, including a top 10 video where I talked about some of my all-time favorite role-playing books. And even though this came out just this year, uh, this absolutely made that list. Um, Undead are some of my favorite creatures. I use them in every campaign that I've run. And um, this is just one of the best books uh, centered on Undead that I've ever read. And I have a few of them. And this is so, like, by far my favorite. Um, you have, like, new monsters, obviously, new creatures that you can throw up against your players. But you also have options for player characters, including the ability to become undead themselves. So let's just say that you have a player and their favorite character ends up getting killed in a session. Um, and you just decide, or the party has a necromancer, and you know how they always joke about bringing... Uh, dead party members back as skeletons or whatever. You can actually do that now, but the skeleton actually retains the memory and sentience and awareness of the character. Uh, that's just uh, I, I, that's just too cool. Like I absolutely, absolutely love it. And uh, we can actually use this book as a segue into the next section of this video, where we're going to talk about accessories. Now, Paizo puts out some of the best accessories. I have ever seen uh, for role-playing games. The, the, the attention to detail, the quality, um, the, the ability to understand what your consumers want and deliver on that is uh, basically second to none. They put out some really fantastic stuff. So we have the Book of the Dead book, but they also have a series of battle cards uh, including one for the Book of the Dead. So the battle cards, I've done unboxings and reviews, so again, the playlist will be in the, uh, in the video description. But we'll just take a look at this one of these really quick. And essentially, these are just the stack cards from the creatures that you can have, uh, that you find in the various books. Now, what's great about them is that they are nice, large size cards. One side will have artwork on it, depicting the creature, while the other side will have stack cards. And I'm not going to dig too deep for trying to find one, but I think we've got, here we go. Uh, now, one of the things that they will do is that if a creature has a long stat block, instead of actually, you know, not including the monster in the set, because, um, you know, why would you want a creature in a set that it should be in based on the name of the product? Um, but instead of like just omitting it or re-release or releasing it later in a different set with larger size cards to create some really big inconsistencies, what they'll actually do is just have two cards. They'll use multiple cards uh, for their for their monsters. And you know, again, that's just something that you know I think your consumers are going to be okay with. I know that was something that I was always kind of uh, peeved over was that um, there were creatures from other games that had stat cards released for them, and the stats were long enough that they just didn't include them in the set. And I always hated that. Um, so the fact that Paizo is just like, you know what, we would rather have a single monster take up multiple cards than not have it available in the set that it's supposed to be a part of. Again, just absolutely fantastic stuff there. So we got the uh, the Book of the Dead, so that's just an example. Um, there's also battle cards for all three of the bestiaries. There's battle cards for the NPCs that you get in the Game Mastery Guide. And again, those videos showing those products will be in the, uh, in the playlist at the end. But Starfinder also has some of these sets, and we've got the Alien Archive battle cards. So the Alien Archive books are a little bit thinner 
uh, than your bestiaries for Pathfinder. So what they've actually done is they've bundled two Alien Archives into a single set. So instead of having four sets of these cards, you've got Alien Archives 1 and 2, and then they also have a set for Alien Archives 3 and 4. And again, these are your, your stat cards. You've got the artwork on one side, you've got the stats on the other side, and once again, if a creature will take up more than one card, like this one right on the top is a great example, once again, they'll just print it on two cards instead of not having it in the set. And once again, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. And these are excellent products, excellent accessories that, you know, may have flown under the radar a little bit. So once again, these make a fantastic gift for your Starfinder or Pathfinder fans um, that you're looking to buy stuff for. Now, in addition to the battle cards, we also have all kinds of other really great card sets that Paizo has put out to support their RPGs. I mentioned earlier that uh, in 2021 they released the Guns and Gears uh, deck, or not the deck, the, the, the book, with the Inventor class and the Gunslinger class and stuff to support that. Well, this year they actually released the decks of cards for equipment that would be pertinent to each of those classes, including having the artwork, the coloration of the border of the box, not only match what's inside the book, uh, but have like the same colors, the same artwork around the, the edges of the box. Really, really great stuff. So again, the equipment decks are fantastic. Uh, I did a video of the gear deck. I didn't do the gun deck again, just because there was kind of some real world stuff that left me feeling a little uncomfortable about showcasing guns. But I think in 2023, uh, we'll definitely finally open that up and have a look at it. But the review video of the gears deck will be available in the playlist that you can click on at the end of the video. Um, there's also the deck of endless NPCs for Pathfinder. Um, you, when the, honestly, you can really use this for just about any uh, fantasy role-playing game. Uh, I did a video for this as well, showing you how to use it, but you essentially uh, take multiple cards from the deck, you can shuffle them up, and you just start laying them out in a particular fashion, and that will give you things like the character's alignment, their sort of ancestry and class uh, combinations, um, their personal motivations, if they have like secrets or stuff like that. It's just such an amazing product that again, uh, this would be a fantastic. This, If any of these card accessories are ones that I would recommend as a great gift for 2022, this is one that I cannot, cannot endorse enough. And again, since there's very little actual like rule specific information on here, um, then you can use this for other role-playing games as well. So even if you're trying to buy something for somebody that's maybe not necessarily into Pathfinder, um, you can get them this deck and they can use it to generate NPCs and who knows, they might be intrigued enough by the quality of this to search out the actual role-playing game. So again, the deck of endless NPCs is my top pick for these card accessories uh, as a gift because these are just absolutely, it's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then just one last one I'm going to show here. This is the Relics deck. Again, I just received um, the, uh, the the shipment that had this with along with the Impossible Lands and a few other things uh, which I've recorded. I did a video showing like doing a product showcase. Um, this is only a few days after that, um, so I haven't again haven't had a chance to actually open this up yet. But again, Relics. Um, this just seems like a really cool concept. You've got um, cards, again, that you can use, you can lay out, or you can draw to create um, sort of information on how to power a relic, how it gains its abilities, stuff like that. So, uh, again, a really, really cool concept, and I absolutely think this is, again, another fantastic set. I haven't done the video yet, but, again, just based off of Paizo's track record, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's going to be amazing. The, the unboxing and demonstration of it will be coming out within a few days of this video. And uh, also, we do have some card stuff, like I said, for Starfinder, I had shown the Alien Archive battle cards, but they also released their spell card set. So we have uh, the regular spell cards, and then we have uh, the expansion for it. The regular spell cards has all of the spells from Galactic, uh, sorry, what is it here? Uh, the Character Operations Manual and the Core Rulebook. And then you have the Supplement deck, which has all of the spells from things like Adventure Paths, from uh, the Galactic Magic book, as well as other things like Pact Worlds and stuff like that. So 
Again, really fantastic. We'll just take a quick look at some of the cards here uh, because again, they do a really great job uh, with these decks. So you just have the uh, the spell description, the information on them, and um, you know all the stuff that would be in the core rulebook. So let's see if we can get it get it to focus there. And uh, again, one of the things that they do that's really great, I'm not going to dig through uh, to find a specific card here, but one of the great things that they do, again, is because the back of the card just has like sort of the placeholder or the generic artwork that you see here, um, if a spell description is too long to fit on the single side of the card, then what they'll do is they'll use the back for the rest of the text. Again, simple, simple solutions that people I, like I know and people I've talked to and shown these to absolutely almost unanimously agree that they would rather have the text on both sides of the card then again, only have a very, very brief description that's almost useless, and then the page reference on the uh, on at the bottom of it. So again, Paizo's attention to consumer, you know, uh, preferences is second to none. Really is. All right, so we got a few other accessories here that I want to kind of discuss. Uh, so one of the uh, the cool things that Paizo puts out, they put out a lot of these double-sided maps. Now again, I'm showing a flip mat here. This is one that came with the first edition Pathfinder beginner box. But they also release regular uh, new vert maps for both Pathfinder and Starfinder. So just using some recent examples, we've got the Starfinder Metropolis map, but they've got all kinds of these. Um, a really great sort of series of things. There's like alien planet sort of landscapes. Um, there's um, for Pathfinder, there's um, things like islands or um, taverns or city streets or, you know, um, like graveyards, ruins. There's just uh, the amount of various uh, their ambush sites, there's just so many of these things. Again, I, I could spend a ton of time showing all kinds of various ones, but I would just say flip mats are fantastic accessories. Again, uh, one of my favorite Starfinder sessions that I ever ran was 100% improvised based off of inspiration that came to me from one of the flip mats that I had purchased. And it, again, it was one of the, the most fun sessions I ever had running Starfinder and it was because I looked at one of these flip mats it's like you know what that gives me an idea and uh, the group loved it and they I don't think they had any idea that I hadn't actually prepared anything and was completely do doing everything off the cuff but yeah again really really great stuff so we got the uh, the regular uh, flip mats with just like the single double-sided features and then they also have uh, mainly for Pathfinder but they do uh, regularly put out these multi-packs which will actually have two double-sided maps uh, which will usually all be sort of built around a theme. Like I said, the ambush sites had two double-sided maps, which would have things like um, like a canyon that the players may be walking through uh, with like cliffs kind of higher up where you could have creatures ambushing them by throwing ranged attacks or dropping boulders on them. Um, you know, just all kinds of really cool stuff like that. With just a large, like a hill um, that again, the, you, you could have um, people attacking the, like your players or your players could set up the ambush. So really, really cool stuff. This one is a series of deadly mines. Uh, which again, who doesn't love using the occasional, um, you know, mines, uh, location, locale in your uh, campaigns. And we got some really cool stuff in here as well. These things again are absolutely fantastic. And I, I love these to death as well. Um, but I will say, um, one of the common things that people have said, uh, in my flip mat related videos is that for a lot of them, especially ones that have like dungeon features, now the ones that are more based off of like nature, outdoor wilderness settings, or even something like city streets, for example, could be used quite regularly. But some of these are a little bit more specific, so it's harder to get multiple uses out of them, which is fair. Um, if you have a large enough uh, collection or assortment, then you can start rotating some stuff back in, you know, after a year or so. But uh, Paizo has you covered there as well, because in addition to the flip mats, they also have the flip tile sets. Now I've done some videos with these already, and the flip tiles again are fantastic because they are six inch by six inch squares that you can, uh, that are double sided, and you can arrange them in whatever manner that you want to create maps. They're much more modular, so even using the same tile set, you can make dozens, hundreds of maps 
uh, and they're not going to be like carbon copies of one another, which is great. So you've got your starter sets, um, and the starter sets will be kind of your more generic uh, type of cards. They're ones that are kind of used to fill out um, locations, but they'll have things like, you again, you might have uh, like a tower with an arcane barrier around it. You might have sort of like um, abandoned ruins or something like um, like mausoleums or crypts from a graveyard. So you'll kind of have stuff like that. But then they also support these. So they have the starter sets, and they're called ex starter sets because they also have expansion sets, which I still need to do the video for this one. But the expansion sets are great because what they are, are they're more just specifically themed uh, sets. So we've got the villain's layers, and here we've got a monster layer, so you can have things like a rock's nest, or like an ice cave, or like a well, white dragon, or some other types of creatures. So these are usually a bit more, so you got like icy shores, soggy isles, underground caves, lava layers, sky high nests, and dungeon dens. So the... Uh, the expansions will be a lot more specific, um, but again, you use these in combination with the starter sets and you can make some incredible maps. So again, really fantastic products. And again, the kind of things that can really, uh, you know, help uh, elevate your games. And what's, again, what's great about these tiles is because they're six inch by six inch, these double-sided poster maps, um, they take up quite a bit. Like the, the, the average size one is, um, it's two feet by two and a half feet on like the further dimensions and you know what that takes up a lot of space like I actually have trouble uh, sometimes with the tables that I've run games at uh, being able to have these folded out and still have my players have room for all their books and products but with these six inch by six inch tiles you can create smaller maps that might only be a two by two so you might have you know a 12 12 12 squares by 12 squares and you still have all the room that you need for your minis and your combat so again the flip tiles uh, absolutely fantastic there's a slew of them for Starfinder as well so definitely check these out at your local game store all right so finally the final section that I want to discuss in this video is going to be you've got the rule books you've got your introductory stuff you have some really cool accessories but maybe you want some just adventures that you can pick up off your shelf skim through and start running for your groups now i will say that for both pathfinder and starfinder they do put out regular monthly for pathfinder and i think it's bi-monthly for starfinder um, but they do put out on a regular basis adventure paths for um, both games and Adventure Paths are great because they are complete campaigns or campaign arcs. Uh, they usually range from three to six volumes that you can buy again over a period of time. And they're great. Um, I love their Adventure Paths. They put out some really fantastic ones. I'm not going to include the Adventure Paths in this video. And the main reason for that is unless you're buying a complete set of Adventure Path installments for somebody for a gift, which is pretty pricey, um, buying them a single book and then, you know, if they like it enough, feeling obligated to buy a bunch more. Again, it's not going to be something that we can all necessarily do. You know, times are tough, money is tight. So I'm looking at just complete, one singular product adventures that you can run for your group. And yeah, there's some really, really cool stuff here. I'm actually going to start with one that's not quite a full-fledged campaign, but it is an amazing book and I wanted to showcase it here and I felt it was better to have it in the adventure section uh, because we've got the Starfinder Drift Crisis book. Um, now what's great about this is it does have, um, it has like player character class options, um, some you know feats and stuff along those lines, new equipment, all kinds of great stuff that you can add to your game. But there's also a bunch of adventure seeds that you can weave together to create a long-term story. Uh, so the Drift Crisis is essentially, uh, the Drift is like an extra-dimensional uh, location that ships will travel through to be able to cross, uh, cross, to <laughs> to cross vast distances. And um, what happens is that, you know, the travel was always not quite 100% reliable, like two ships could take off at the same time, to, to setting out for the same destination, and arrive at separate times just based on the way that drift travel works. 
but now the drift um, just is completely 100% unreliable or even inaccessible, and it's throwing everything into chaos. It just takes the status quo and completely turns it on its head, which is, again, just absolutely fantastic. And in addition to the, uh, the book, it also comes with this double-sided flip mat. So this is something that you can buy, again, as an additional product to go along with it. So if you want to get them sort of the set, uh, you can buy the uh, the book with the adventure seeds, the new class options, and all the stuff that you need to run the, uh, the, the Drift Crash Crisis. And then you can also get the double-sided map, which this one in particular has one side, and that is just a beautiful, um, sort of like almost like a nebula. Uh, this is hex-based for ship to ship combat, but then you also have a location that you can use for just regular miniatures. So again, really, really cool stuff, and it's something that you can spend an entire year just going through and running, and I think that's fantastic. Now for Pathfinder, uh, one of the things, and Starfinder has started doing this as well, but Pathfinder, in addition to their adventure paths, uh, several times throughout the year, they will also release a standalone adventure um, that will also come, uh, or not come with, but is, is bun or you can um, have an accompanying product that you can purchase alongside of it that will include a flip mat. And they've had some really cool ones in the past, like the Fall of Plague Stone, which is a launch product, which had like a really strong focus on alchemy. Um, you've had um, the, like, one of the best haunted house adventures I think has ever been created. Really cool horror stuff. Um, but I've shown some of those in previous videos. They came out in 2021, so I don't want to focus on them in this video. But in 2022, we got what might be one of the coolest ones of all, which is the Crown of the Kobold King, uh, which also comes with a Crown of the Kobold King flip mat. So again, these are separate purchases. You can't, you know, they're not bundled together. Um, your game store might. Like, I know there's a game store in my area that will actually take some of these products and will just uh, shrink wrap them together or put them in a cellophane bag and um, just sell them together as a bundle. But, uh, so this is a separate product, but it is connected to this one, you know, flip mat, Crown of the Kobold King, Crown of the Kobold King Adventure. And uh, yeah, so really cool stuff. Now what this one is, it's actually a, a modernization and updating for second edition Pathfinder of three uh, pre-Pathfinder first edition modules that were put out by Paizo in the Galarian setting under the Game Mastery product line. And uh, again, I need to do the review video on this, but this is fantastic. This is an adventure for levels one through six. Um, it's just, it's got a really heavy emphasis on like dungeon crawling, but just some really cool set pieces in here, including um, some uh, necrotic uh, energy being released that causes the dead from the, uh, the graveyard in the town, that's sort of the base of operations for the players, uh, to start emerging and causing issues. There's, uh, you know, people going missing, and the reasons behind that as the Kobold King sort of descends deeper and deeper into madness, trying to awaken the powers in the titular crown, uh, which is actually something that has connections to the Whispering Tyrant, one of the most iconic uh, Pathfinder Galarian villains uh, in the game's existence. So again, just really, really cool. And this actually comes as a hardcover, uh, which is something, again, that I can definitely appreciate. So really, really cool stuff there. Now, let's just say you want something a little bit more substantial. Um, there were two uh, things here that I really want to show off uh, today. And these are actual complete adventure paths that have been combined into a singular hardcover book. Now, the first one that I want to show is for Starfinder, and that is the Dead Suns Adventure Path. This was the first adventure path to come out for the Starfinder role-playing game. And uh, this one was really cool. I actually ran the first few chapters of the, uh, of the adventure path before um, 2020 happened and everything kind of shut down. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love this storyline, and uh, with the original Dead Sons Adventure Path, there were some issues with it. Uh, for example, it actually released before you had, like, the Alien Archive and stuff like that, so it was largely, uh, if there were creatures that weren't printed in the individual uh, volumes, installments, up until the release of the Alien Archive, uh, then they would direct you to what was, I believe, like a free RPG Day product, 
um, which you can still get the PDF for, like that's perfectly available, but it was just something where it was kind of hard to find the, the proper stats that you might need. So here, everything is based off of the Alien Archives, and I believe they also made some updates um, to sort of fix some of the uh, the issues with um, stat blocks and stuff like that that I think they had in the original. But yeah, the Dead Sons Adventure Path, a really cool uh, adventure where, you know, you've got a fragment of an interstellar doomsday weapon um, that sort of makes its way into the Pact Worlds, and then you've got various organizations vying for control of the full artifact. Um, really, really cool stuff. And what was great about this Adventure Path in particular is, again, it was the first one, so the first two or three installments was really just about getting the players to different locations in the Pact Worlds to kind of give them just a sense of how diverse that, you know, so, uh, solar system really was. Just really, really cool stuff. Uh, it begins on Absalon Station, and then the second adventure takes place on the planet of Castravel, which is where, like, the elves were native to. It's kind of uh, like a jungle-type uh, environment with some ancient ruins. Just, again, a really, really awesome uh, adventure path. And it is compiled in hardcover form. So, again, definitely worth uh, checking out. And then, finally, for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, we have the Abomination Vaults Adventure Path. Now, at the time I'm recording this, uh, Paizo has just released the battle cards that go along with this adventure path. I don't have them yet. They were shipped out, or they're about to be shipped out, but I didn't want to wait uh, it's a, to get stuff from their head office or their warehouse in the States to Nova Scotia, especially during the month of December, is not going to be easy. I probably won't get them until after the holidays. So I want to show the uh, the book here. And again, the, advent the Abomination Vaults was, uh, I think it was the third uh, Adventure Paths. It was the third or fourth Adventure Path for uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. But it was a really awesome dungeon crawl. Um, which just had, you know, various levels to sort of descend into. Um, the Abomination Vaults was actually sort of like a storage facility um, for, a, you know, a villain from Pathfinder's history or Galarian's history uh, that was amassing these things to unleash them on the, you know, the surrounding countryside. However, the, the villain in question was disposed of before they were able to enact their plans. And over the years or decades since, uh, the abominations within have started um, kind of creating nightmarish uh, new creatures that they, you know, are spawned from them. Just, again, a really, really cool, uh, you know, kind of a, again, more of a classic dungeon crawl uh, type of uh, campaign. And, yeah, again, this is really great. Uh, it also was meant to be sort of a tie-in product to the beginner bots as well, where you could actually take the characters and the events uh, from the, the beginner box and then just have them sort of transposed into this campaign. So if they have the beginner box already, and let's just say you get them the beginner box, you get them the uh, the, the pocket edition core rule book, and then the Abomination Vaults hardcover, they're going to be set for quite a while. So really, really great stuff. And yeah, just again, fantastic stuff, products from from Paizo, one of my all-time favorite RPG producing companies. They just put out, again, some of the greatest stuff. Um, their adventures are, are top-notch. Um, their source books, again, are full of lots of creative ideas, fantastic writing, beautiful artwork. Uh, just, again, just it's refreshing to see just some of the ideas that they come up with, like the Dark Archive, the Book of the Dead, um, the Lost Omens Travel Guide just for Starfinder. You've got the Drift Crisis taking what was sort of like just considered to be normal, everyday, um, you know, living and completely throwing it all into chaos. You've got the Interstellar Species for a whole host of new playable uh, races for your your players to engage with the Dead Sons Adventure Path, the uh, the spell cards, the beginner box again, the pocket editions, the flip mats. It's just you know again a really fantastic company that puts out some amazing products and some great. And these would make great gifts for the year 2022. So there you go. Those are just some of the uh, suggestions for gifts uh, for the Paizo family of role playing games. 
Uh, there will be playlists again, like I said, for both the Starfinder role-playing game, so the videos that I've done for Starfinder products to date, as well as the Pathfinder videos that I've done to date. If you want to click on the playlist, you'll be able to see a whole bunch more that I just wasn't able to cover in this video because we're already pushing 50 minutes. So I think this is a good time to uh, to cut this one off. But yeah, again, I just want to thank Paizo for the amazing work that they do. Some of the, the again, the best accessories that I've ever seen. Um, just done with what consumers have been asking for of other companies in mind and delivering 110%, even though that is mathematically impossible. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully some of these products have, uh, uh, you know, helped you uh, at least just kind of point you in the right direction for some cool things that you can get for the RPG lover or prospective RP RPG lover in your life. And uh, yeah, I'm wishing you nothing but the best. Thank you again. Taking any time out of your day to watch something that I've made means the absolute world to me. And I will see you all next time. Until then, take care.